only when I was 35 years old, which wasn't so long ago, a doctor finally gave this whole thing a name. And as he gave me the diagnosis, I, I cried. Y así fue como me dio el diagnóstico que cambió mi vida, ya que entendí qué pasaba con mi cuerpo, que no era psicológico, que no me lo estaba inventando, y realmente me sentí validada por primera vez. He walked into the room, saw the way I was sitting, saw my hypermobility, and he said, I think you have something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So my experience of getting diagnosed was extremely frustrating. I live in New York City and I went to the world's most reputable hospitals, multiple ones, trying to seek a diagnosis and help. I'd walk into a doctor's office with a list and they would just look at me and be like, do you have anxiety? I was told from age 19 to 14 that my pain was in my head and that if I went to a therapist that my pain would go away um, and it didn't. My diagnostic process took me about 10 years. It wasn't handed to me, I found it. I found it through research on the internet and they tell you not to trust Google but sometimes you have to trust your intuition. I still have to convince myself that I am in the pain that I am and that I have the symptoms that I have because of all the times that I've had doctors say that I was fine and that there was nothing wrong. It seemed like every system in my body was breaking down at the same time. So when I told my doctor this and when I asked, you know, why is my intestine falling out of me? He said, um, I think you have some trauma in your life. Go see a psychologist. De naissance, évidemment, mais chez moi, ça a été pire à partir de l'âge de 24 ans. Du jour au lendemain, je suis tombée en invalidité. Me tomó viajar por cuatro países y fue luego de recibir el diagnóstico de casi todas las condiciones asociadas que pude obtener el diagnóstico de síndrome de Ehlers-Danlos. The hardest part has been that it's invisible and people can't tell how much pain I'm in, which is also something I wish others knew or understood. But every day I do ha have pain somewhere in my body, even if that's just a really bad headache. I don't know what pain-free is. I just don't. It's also the fact that that pain has kept me from some of my biggest passions. I think it's important for people to understand that simple things hurt. I always had a pain or something broken. There was always something. What do you feel like every day? I'm hurt. That's the main thing. She hurts every day. I want to run, jump, play with my kids. I want to go on walks with them, but my body can only handle so much. A big misconception is that EDS is only about the joint hypermobility, and that's one part of it, and it's kind of a small part in comparison to what it's really like. Um, EDS means that we produce faulty poor collagen and therefore every body system is affected in some kind of way. You very rarely understand all the comorbidities that go along with it. Ça touche plusieurs systèmes chez moi, euh, évidemment au niveau articulaire, mais aussi cardiovasculaire, digestif. Ça touche mes yeux, ça touche mes oreilles et beaucoup d'autres choses. And being tired all the time is just draining. I keep saying it, it's, I'm tired of being tired. Um, I'm used to the pain. I'm used to the joints. I'm not used to being tired all the time. So yeah, EDS does cause a lot of comorbidities. Um, I'm guessing it's just because everything's made up of tissues. So I think everything just causes a problem. EDS is a spectrum. You know, you may have one or two things on the list. Or you may have the whole list. But I'd say the hardest, hardest part of all of it has just been seeing her be in pain every day and That's knowing that true. there's nothing we can do to fix it. And the thing with Ehlers-Danlos is you don't get fixed. Um, although I received great improvement, I still have daily struggle. And my symptoms were so significant that I am now currently on social security disability income. That's been the biggest, biggest change for me is having to adjust to not feeling productive enough. Life with EDS is not about healing your symptoms. It's about 
management about being okay enough today to get to tomorrow. I have to be really careful how I balance my day. I shouldn't sit for too long um, because it's too, it's too much um, effort or it's very painful for my back muscles to have to like hold my body up. Um, you know, because every day is different. You know, you, you can't plan ahead and that's what I really struggle with. Um, and that's what I find most difficult is, you know, I really want to travel and, you know, traveling with a disability is hard at the best of times. El síndrome de Lerza Loss es multisistémico y se necesitan especialistas que lo traten, porque si no, siempre el paciente es el que va a salir afectado. Most doctors don't understand it and we end up not knowing what's wrong with our body even though we have that original diagnosis. You know your body, um, you know, and if there's something wrong, your chances are you're right. The hope for EDS is that it begins to get more recognition so we can get better quality treatment. So, here's to hoping for that. I do a lot of swimming. I'm a lot of bodyboarding. Um, spending all my time in the ocean. It's the only time really that my condition doesn't really affect me is when I'm in the water. It's such a magical thing. It's literally just all my pain and everything just, just vanishes. J'ai plus de problèmes aujourd'hui qu'il y a 15 ans, mais euh, avec cette équipe-là et avec les connaissances euh, qu'on accumule, ben je dirais quand même que ça va mieux et puis ben on prend les choses euh, un jour à la fois. Donc... I manage EDS with pain medications, vitamins, lifestyle changes, compression garments, braces, splints, orthotics, different types of mobility aids. 19 minutes of exercises every day. Heat and cold, physiotherapy, chiropractor. Und bin froh, dass ich die Musik habe wo ich sehr, sehr viel Schmerzen verarbeiten kann, sehr gut verarbeiten kann, wo ich mich ablenken kann, wo ich einfach Kraft tanken kann. Just because I cannot do something doesn't mean I don't want to do it. Um, so it's really appreciated when people continue to invite us even when we've said no, um, because some days are better than others. And so some days we can manage the things that we want to do. I still am happy. I do have disappointment in things that I can't do, but I found a way to surrender to my body's needs without giving up hope. And I think a lot of that is because of the people I surround myself with and I'm truly grateful for them. Und wünsche euch, dass ihr nicht die Hoffnung aufgibt. Es kann sich einigermaßen stabilisieren bzw. man kann leben, aber man muss etwas für sich selber tun. Um, but you know when I was at school, when I was at doctors, they always told me you know, you're going to really suffer, you know, you can't do I want to be a pilot. And they said, you know, you're never going to do that. Well, I did. Um, I keep telling everyone there's no such word as can't. So if you want to go and do it, do it. Um, and don't let this horrendous condition that really bothers me and bothers everybody else define who you are. Aux autres personnes avec le syndrome de Lars Danlos ou avec des maladies chroniques, maladies rares, j'aimerais dire que c'est pas un obstacle au bonheur et que on peut le trouver, qu'on peut avoir des surprises. Puis euh, ben voilà. Merci.